In this question, we're dragging a modern art sculpture by a rug, and we're asked whether the sculpture is going to tip or slip first. We're given all of the coefficients of friction, <clears throat> static and kinetic, the mass, uh, and the radius of gyration. So first of all, we're going to analyze the two cases. So case one is if we have slipping, and case two is tipping. So slipping is a simpler case, and then we have tipping, which is a, a bit more complicated. So we'll analyze each in detail. And we're going to draw a free body diagram for each. But essentially, always start with a diagram. We have our forces. So actually, I'll draw forces in green. We have our um, weight. This is Fg. And then we're going to have a normal force, N, and we're going to have our friction force. And our friction force is going to point on towards the right force of friction, okay? And this is because we're expecting an acceleration of the rug A, which I'll draw in red here um, as A, and this block is going to start slipping, um, it's going to accelerate with the rug, but if it slips, um, it's going to move in this direction, um, so force of friction is going to act in the opposite direction, so that's why it's pointed towards the right here. Again, this force of friction and this normal force are applied on the bottom surface, but we haven't defined yet at which point. So here I've just drawn them arbitrarily in the center, but it's not going to be the center for each case. Okay, so for slipping, um, it doesn't matter where that friction force and that normal force act. So I'm not going to draw the whole structure, make this complicated shape. I'm just going to draw a rectangle um, for our free body diagram and then um, I will add stuff to it. All right, so in our case, um, I'm gonna draw, G is gonna be over here. So this is G, the center of gravity that's identified there, it's not central. Um, so in the case of slipping, so we're gonna have our acceleration always going this way, right? Um, so this is gonna be A, and in the case of slipping, what happens is um, the force, the friction force, um, is not enough um, to keep the block stationary. All right, and so the block starts slipping backwards. Okay, so essentially, the, it doesn't really matter at which location this force is applied, um, as you'll see later from our moment diagram. But essentially, we're going to have our um, gravitational force pointing down, Fg, and then we have a normal force pointing upwards, and a friction force pointing towards the right, F of F. Okay? And in this case, alpha, the angular acceleration, um, will be zero, because this is not tipping, this is slipping. So we don't have an angular acceleration in this case. Um, and the condition for slipping uh, is that, or to avoid slipping, is that the force of friction, so F of F, needs to be lower or equal to uh, mu S uh, times N. So again, static friction coefficient, because we are talking before slipping, not after slipping, so it's static. And right at the point where it starts to slip, the equality um, occurs. Okay, so when f of f is equal to mu s n, that's the maximum point before then it starts slipping. Okay, so we're going to be applying this condition here um, to this system to solve for all of the unknowns. Okay, uh, so this is the slipping case, pretty simple. The tipping case is a bit more complex. So we have to look, again, we still have our force of gravity here at g, um, fg. But the location of our forces 
the normal and friction forces matters in this case. Um, because when something tips, the forces will always be at the outermost edge. Um, so the normal force, again, will be right at the edge, same thing as the friction force. Um, and this is because um, once the force goes outside, um, then it, it, the body would have to start tipping, right? Um, it, it, the force has to be applied at a point on the body, and the last point it can be applied to is to the edge um, for it to pivot around that and then start tipping. Um, so again, we have our same acceleration, but in this case we also have another part to the kinetic diagram, which is the alpha component. Um, so we have an alpha directed in this direction um, because um, everything is going to start tipping, and so we it's not going to be um, fixed. Um, and again, the acceleration is only in the x direction for both cases, which is going to simplify our problem. I'm also going to draw in the coordinates for um, both systems. I'm just going to draw them once. Um, x, y, positive rotation, counterclockwise. Okay. Uh, so now, um, the condition um, for this system, and then I also forgot to write the other condition here, which is alpha equals to zero. The condition for uh, the system to the right is that um, these forces are on that outermost edge. Um, and that's going to ensure we have tipping, and then we also have an alpha, which um, ensures everything is rotating. Okay, um, so let's solve this question. Um, let's solve for these two systems, um, doing a sum of forces and moments, and um, see what we get. So in the end, we're trying to solve for this acceleration here, right? That's what the question asks. Um, we're given this fg, um, we're given uh, this static friction coefficient, um, and we have to essentially solve for everything else. So let's start uh, with case one. So again, I'm going to keep it divided between the two. Um, so case one, we have our sum of forces in the x direction, which is going to be equal to max, which is just ma. So this is going to be equal to um, f of f equals to ma. All right, um, so A is the acceleration x direction. Uh, then we have our sum of forces in the y direction, which is equal to zero because there's no acceleration in the y direction. Um, and when we implement this, we get the following. Um, N minus mg is equal to zero. Okay, and so here, with this equation, we can directly solve for n, right? Because we have mg. So we can directly solve for n. And then we have our last equation, which was this um, constraint here, where f of f has to be equal to mu s times n. So since we can solve for n, we can plug in n here because we have mu s and we can find the force of friction. Once we have the force of friction, we can plug it in here and we can solve for the acceleration. Okay, um, so once you um, plug all these numbers in, you get the following. And this is the final acceleration A for the case of slipping. Okay, so this is, I'm going to underline it in red. This is what we're, we're going to need. So this is essentially this acceleration we found we, we need on the carpet um, for the slipping case. So the, this is the maximum acceleration before tipping occurs. Um, now let's analyze tipping. So. Um, if in the tipping case we get a lower acceleration, then that means tipping will occur before slipping. And the opposite is true if we get the opposite results. Okay, so we're essentially solving for the acceleration in each case and then comparing the two accelerations. So let's do a sum of forces um, for the um, second case. 
So sum of force in the x direction yields the same exact um, uh, equation, so equals to max. Uh, therefore, f of f is equal to ma. And then a sum of force in the y direction also yields the same equation. Um, so we get n minus mg is equal to 0. OK. Um, but now, um, in this case, we don't have this constraint here. So we need an extra equation, or else we can't solve for all of these unknowns, a, n, f of f, right? And then we also have alpha. Um, so we need to introduce an extra equation, which is our sum of moments, which we didn't have to do for the other case, but we do need over here. So this is the sum of moments, and we'll take this about uh, the center of gravity, g, okay? So this is gonna be equal to i alpha. I g alpha. So once we implement this, we get um, the force of friction times 1.6 meters uh, minus n times 0 0.1 meters um, is equal to um, I g alpha. Okay, so we have done our moment balance and we have four unknowns and three equations here. So one, two, three, four. But we know that right at the moment that this starts tipping, alpha is actually zero, right at that moment before tipping. When it starts tipping, alpha is gonna start, is gonna have a value, but right before it's not, alpha is gonna be zero. So we can actually get rid of this term um, because we're looking at the point right before tipping, not at tipping. Um, so that's why we set this alpha equals to zero. In this case, alpha is always zero because it's going to slip. It's never going to start rotating. In this case, alpha is not always zero, but right before it is zero. So that's why we eliminate that. Um, so in this case, now we can actually solve for our, our system of three equations, three unknowns. So just like we did before, and solve for n, we can plug in n over here and solve for f of f. We can plug in f of f in here to get a. So let's do that. Um, we get that, um, we get the following. Go to 80 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared times 0 0.1 meters divided by 1.5 meters and f of f is going to be equal to uh, 32.32 newtons and given this f of f um, so this is essentially plugging these two equations together to get this um, then we take this f of f, we plug it into here, so we divide it by um, 80 kilograms to get the acceleration. So A is equal to 32.32 um, newtons divided by 80 kilograms, which is equal to 0 0.65 meters per second squared. Okay, and so this is the other value of acceleration. And as you can see, this value here is smaller. So um, let's write that out. If that's smaller, then that means it's going to occur before the other one. Okay, so since uh, A of, in this case, it was tipping, is smaller than A of, therefore, um, the system will tip before slipping. And the magnitude of the acceleration, A is equal to 0 0.65 meters per second squared.